I believe in having partners. I believe in inviting people in and giving them large stakes. That stake may even be 20%, 25%, 30%, 35%. But there's kind of a mythology in Silicon Valley, which is that the co-founders model is the only model. And we know it because we have Larry and Sergey, and we have, uh, what is it, Steve Chen and Chad Hurley and David and Jerry. And each of these images that I pulled up, I never had to type the last name. I literally just typed uh, Jerry and David, and it came up. And I typed Steve and Chad, and it came up. I mean, that's how uh, baked into our system it is. But just because this model has worked does not mean the model works. And I'm here to tell you what happens on the inside. OK, because we know most companies fail. I spend so much time as marriage counselor with startups who don't get along. And it happens something like this, life event. Someone start, wants to throw himself at this company, the other person doesn't. Someone gets married and they have a girlfriend or boyfriend and they get pulled to other opportunities. Some people perform better, some don't. We had co-founders, we didn't decide who was CEO. Now we've got a company and people are interested in funding us, which one of us is gonna be CEO? I mean, these kind of issues, our garden variety, happen all the time. And we just don't talk about them because we know this Silicon Valley myth that it always works. So for me, it's a sequencing thing. And I say to people, even if you start it and you decide to give 45% to somebody else do it. But ultimately, I prefer a stable environment where I have a passionate founder, passionate leader, willing to share equity, willing to bring people in decision making, but divorce clauses. And I saw a company recently, very interesting company, that had two co-founders. And one of them walked. And they didn't have founder vesting. So the guy who walked has a free ride on 50% equity while the other mug sweats his, uh, I won't say it, and uh, tries to create something big for this guy who's not even working. If you go for the co-founder model, which I'm not telling you don't do it because I know everybody likes to, make sure you have founder vesting. You protect yourself as an individual from, and you protect your partner, by the way, too, because it might be you who decides not to work. There has to be a clause that says what happens if we fall out of love, what happens if one person's passionate and the other person isn't. And I will tell you also, it becomes a problem in fundraising. We look at a company, we see four founders, two of them are gone, two of them only have 12% equity each because they raised angel money, they had four founders, they started at 25, they got diluted down to 12. And, you know, as a venture capitalist, I'm just thinking, okay, let me tell you what happens. I put in money, your 12% becomes 8%. We do another round, your 8% becomes 5%. And then I got to top you up with stock options. And we play this BS game. And so often when I see situations like that, and I think some VCs feel like this, I just prefer not to get involved.